hey guys welcome to my channel thank you for stopping by i hope you guys had a wonderful week i hope you guys are going to be able to enjoy your weekend relax a little bit chill out <laughs> guys there's a message that the lord had laid in my heart like maybe weeks ago and i have been it's been in my spirit and i was like lord how am i going to deliver this message and he had been giving me bit and bit of scripture and so guys i have it here and i pray that i'm able to relay this message in a way that it will bring healing it will bring some revelation and definitely um bring some restoration maybe between families or at least let you um understand why things has been as it is and maybe that you're not so crazy <laughs> or if you felt you were right in a matter then maybe it'll give you something to reconsider but in all things it is to bring people closer to the lord let people turn to the father and you know just be led by him in everything very often we want god in miracles and lord save me from things but very rarely do people actually get the lord involved in their everyday lives you know in those areas that you feel like it's off limit and you can handle it but guys this is something that the lord wants me to talk about and it's i'm not sure what the title will be yet it's somewhere between family loyalty with question marks or it will be when they embrace your enemy or those who have hurt you sometimes you may have family members okay that they embrace the person that have hurt you this individual we're not talking about petty things of oh i just don't want you to talk to this person and i want you to hate this person because we can never hate people regardless but there are some of you where you have family members who have a habit of embracing the person that has really hurt you whether it's a friend or an ex this person have done a lot of awful things to you and it seems as if they have a knack for going to embrace and talk about and maintain very good relationships with a person that have hurt you again we are not saying or we are not trying to foster an environment that, hey, someone hurts your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, that you are supposed to hate the person, okay? We're not supposed to hate people. And through the grace of God and by the power of God, we'll be able to forgive people in his timing, in his way. But I'm talking about when a person has hurt you or or other people in the family you find this person just has to for some reason they maintain good relations they're laughing talking and everything and this person has wounded you deeply so guys i'm going to show you something that the lord revealed to me about that then it is basically no matter what your relationship is whether you get along with your mother your father your brother your sister your kids or not there's a certain level of loyalty that we are to have to one another as family there is a boundary and a line that no person should ever be able to cross whether you're in good standing with your children your parents or not they should never be able to come to you they should never be able to still be in this place with you after they have wounded your child hurt abused and done wrong to your mother your father your siblings there's certain things that should never happen so the lord took me to john chapter 14 1 and 6 so guys i'm going to read all the scriptures that the lord has given to me you can make a note of it I want to say these scriptures are also really excellent sources for when people are telling you that Jesus is separate from God or the Holy Spirit has no relevance or Jesus was just a man. If you read these scriptures from John 14 all the way to 17, you will find a wealth of information there. Just there alone, you'll find a lot of stuff. But of course, you'll find other um, references throughout the word of God. So John chapter 14, guys, I'm going to start. One, I'm going to read one through six from the King James Version. Please feel to feel free to read it over in your version. But I am King James girl, so that's what I'm going to read here. So let not your heart be troubled. Believe ye in God. Okay? Believe also in me. This is Jesus speaking. All right? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. 
In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay, so I just read you John 14, 1 through 6. The Lord took me then over to 23 and 24 of the same chapter. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. That was John 14, 23 and 24. Now I'm going to go down to 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, guys, we're going to go over to John 15. One through two. I'm giving you all the scripture, guys, but I'm going to give you the word that the Lord gave to me. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. That's John 15, one and two. Now I'm going to read you John 15, seven through ten. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. As the father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue, you, continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. All right. So I just read you John 15, 1 and 2, 7 and 10. Now I'm going to read you John 15, verse 23. It says, he that hateth me, hateth my father also. This is Jesus's word. He that hateth me hateth my father also. John 16 and 26, John chapter 16 and 26, here's the word that I'm going to share. I'm sorry, John 16, uh-oh, wait, 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 I'm getting ahead of myself. So I gave you John 15 and 23 that says, he that hateth me hateth my father also. And John, and going to the first, the same verse of John 15 and 26, it says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. This is still Jesus speaking. Now, guys, I'm going to take you to John chapter 16, verse 27. And it says, for the father himself loveth you because you have loved me and I and have believed that I came out from God. This is the word of Jesus. He's saying, for the father himself loveth you because you have loved me. And have believed that I came out from God. Okay. And verse 32 says, Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that you shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Guys, I read you a lot of information, and the Lord took me to all of this to show 
me something that I'm going to show you today. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. There is no splitting them apart. And there is no, I prefer one to the other. They're all continually working together to promote the other. And I don't think promote is the other, is the right word. But they are about one another. The Father is about the Son. The Son is about the Father. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost have all one thing. And it is to bring us closer, right, to everlasting life. But they are never separate. And there's something that the Lord showed me. Whether you get along with your family member or not, there's certain things that should never happen. Over and over again, there are scriptures where the Lord is saying, for the, the father loveth, for the father loveth himself, for the father loves you because you love me. The father loves you because you love me. God loves us because we love God. We can't separate them, guys. John 15 and 23 says, if you hate Jesus, you hate God. This is the nature of our father. This is the nature of our sovereign God. And so, guys, we are made in God's image and likeness. You can't say, I'm only going to pray to God, but I'm not going to pray to Jesus. Or I'm only going to pray to God and Jesus, but I don't believe in this Holy Ghost. A lot of people say those things, but guys, you find that they are all together. There is no separating them. There is no, I prefer this one, but not that one. If you hate Jesus, you hate God. If you want to get to the father, you have to get through Jesus and get his approval. This is what the word of God says in the Bible. So how is it, guys, that in our family lives, that someone could hate you, hurt you, do you wrong, and your mother and your father is still embracing them? How is it that someone has done you wrong, have really, have, have mistreated you, but they treat them good, and as long as they are treating them right, they're extending an olive branch to that individual. How can you as a mother or a father, you are embracing the person that has broken your son or daughter's heart? How is this person able to sit at and eat and drink and be merry with you as a sister when this person has done the worst to your brother and to your sisters and you can still sit and say come on over and sit and eat and drink and be merry guys you are lacking loyalty you are lacking this attribute that we see demonstrated through the father the son the holy spirit there is no rejecting one without the other rejecting the other you can't get to this other one well, oh i don't like this person i don't believe in this one i'm gonna curse this one I, I i didn't add the scripture but there's a scripture i believe it's in matthew that tells you if you blaspheme the holy spirit jesus said this you can speak against me you can blaspheme me and speak against me if you want to but if you ever speak a blasphemous word against the Holy Spirit, you will never be forgiven in this world or in the world to come. There is a oneness and a unity in the God that we serve. And we often try to figure out, well, well, it's God. How could they be? Guys, we are in this world. We are on this earth. Our mind cannot wrap around it because our only point of reference is the humanity around us. Our only point of reference is what we know as human beings in a flesh. We're spirit being, but we are trapped in our fleshly bodies for now. And so guess what? If you're not looking and you're not seeking God out and you're seeking your own things out, you can't understand it. That makes no sense. But guys, the only way I can look at it is in one, I am mother, I am sister, and I am a niece. Okay? But that's still a very simplified explanation. 
But all I'm trying to tell you guys, let's not try to figure out, oh, people want to argue about the Godhead. People love to argue and they're still not serving God. <laughs> they love to argue about a God they are not loyal to because they just love to argue. I don't deal with the red pen, the red pen crew at all. But guys, what I'm trying to show you is there is a certain level of loyalty that we have to have, whether our relationships with our direct family is cool or not. That is still your mother. That is still your father. That is still your brother. That is still your sister. So there is no reason that somebody could do you grimy and dirty. And your mother or your father or your brother or your sister will pick up the phone or this person knows that they can call and talk to your family for hours and ignore you. They can come over the house and sit and eat and drink and your family looking at you like, what's your problem? As they sit and they embrace the man that cheated on you, that gave you STDs, the man that beat you, the woman that hid your children from you, the woman that has done all types of wrong to you but your sister has invited her over to your birthday party and is doing all these different things there's a lot of mess that's going on guys this is not right there's a certain level of loyalty that you should have to your children parents there's a certain level of loyalty and a boundary, a line that nobody should ever be able to cross. And it has nothing to do with holding animosity, but there are principles and there's certain things you cannot do. God is not a God of unforgiveness, but you are not going to go to him except through his son. You cannot say, I love God, but then at the same time, you're cursing Jesus. You can't say, I believe in the father and the son, but I don't believe in this Holy Ghost. And you want to say all types of things against the Holy Ghost because Jesus says, oh no, that will never be forgiven. So there is a level of loyalty that our Father, our God has that we should emulate, my brothers and sisters. And we don't have an unforgiven God, but there are clean lines and there are absolute boundaries that he has set because he is a loving God. He is a faithful God. He's a holy God. But there are certain lines you will never cross. And there are certain things within the Godhead that you will never be able to do. No matter how many offerings and things you bring, God is clear about who he is. And you're not going to cross that line. Jesus loves and he sacrificed and he will forgive all sins. But if you say something against the Holy Spirit, you can never get past that. You will never be forgiven. So God is calling us to have that loyalty, guys. I'm not telling you to aid and abet your family in mess. Sometimes their family members, they do wrong and they do evil things. This word is not that. I'm not telling you to do anything like that. But God is talking to those of you. You have this thing inside of you that you, the, the truth is, and the Lord is showing me, you have no loyalty. There is something in your heart that you have where you must, you will, you will turn down your own family to maintain a relationship. And it's because you yourself have been rejected. And most people that do that, you will find in their lives that there is an area of abuse, that they have been rejected, they were not protected as children, they were not protected in, in relationships that they should have been protected, they were not protected by their siblings, they may have not been protected by their own mother or their own father, they had those type of relationships where they had some cutthroat experiences and so what happens is if they don't heal correctly, they carry on the same thing. They know that someone has hurt you, but they embrace the person. Oh, they'll get on the phone and talk to the individuals. They make friends with your enemies real easy. And this can even happen with a friend. But guys, I'm here to talk to you about this. That you got to realize that that is a broken characteristic in that individual. 
No, you are not wrong for expecting that if you are hurt or someone has done something wrong to you, you don't want your parents to hate the person, but there has to be a boundary, a boundary that that person who has done this thing against you doesn't have it in their mind that they can still walk and cross the thresholds of your door without any thought to your heart or to your feelings. Your first priority as a parent and as a sibling is to your family member to heal and to ensure that they are strong again to make sure that they are in a place that they are strong enough to still hear the name of this person and to still see this person your first priority is to support your sons and your daughters and your parents you do not embrace the enemy and guys I'm not talking about parent against parent okay you don't want to get involved in petty stuff where your dad don't like your mom so you can't like your mom or your mom don't like your dad so you can't like your dad. I'm not talking about that. Obviously, if someone is bringing harm to your parents, someone's trying to harm your mother or your father, you're going to be like, listen, no, you can't do that, okay? But I I'm talking about just situations where people are in the habit, children, you're in the habit, someone has done something really horrible to your parent and you tend to want to side. You are naturally inclined to side with a person who has done something wrong to your family members, guys. And guys, again, this is, I need to say here over and over again, this is not for when you have that parent that likes to start trouble, that parent that goes around hurting people. You are not supposed to stand in and support your parents when they are doing wrong and they are doing evil and they are trying to do wrong. So oh, I got to stand with my mom. She don't like this lady. So I need to do this lady wrong and I need to make these moves against this person or this man. That is not what I'm talking about. Nothing like that. Nothing when there's any, nothing where there's foul play or anything dishonest going on. I'm keeping it simple. Someone has hurt your child. Someone has hurt your son. And you will, you will side with this person against your child. It's just in you to do this. Someone has hurt your daughter, but it's in you to still keep a relationship with the person who has hurt your daughter. This person has done something wrong against your mother, but it's in you to, to just pick up the phone and still chit chat and do all types of stuff with a person that has done something really wrong and cruel to your mother. Done something really messed up, disrespected, took stuff from your dad and, oh, I, I got to go work for him. He's bringing me money. So you're embracing this person. This is a faulty characteristic. And actually, guys, it is from the devil. And I know that's a strong word, but guys, it's the truth. Satan... <laughs> The reason why I say that is because it's a work of the flesh. If you look at Galatians 5, beginning at 16, you see the malice, strife, backbiting, those type of thing, dissension. It falls under the work of the flesh. And the work of the flesh is what comes from principalities and darkness. There is no split with God. This, there's a certain level of respect loyalty and consideration that you are to have for your family whether you're with them or not mothers stop embracing that man those people that that oh bff of your daughter that's done her wrong and you're still calling her up and inviting her over to eat and do all these things and inviting him over to eat and taking pictures and doing these things because a lot of you you're doing it on purpose some of you you're doing it to hurt your daughter for whatever reason 
You embrace their enemies. You are that person that if something goes wrong in a relationship with your sons, your daughters, you are the, you are going to seek out the offender and you are somehow a source of comfort. And I'm here to tell you that when someone does wrong to your children, someone has done wrong to your family and you can have you can embrace them, you have something in common. You have something in common. I'm here to tell you something. This message is not telling people to have aught against anyone. But it's about maintaining certain values that you should have that we see here. As I described in the word of God, that they, you can't hate Jesus and say you love God. It's not going to happen. You can't. You can't curse at the Holy Spirit and say something and think, you, oh, you, God is still going to let you into heaven. No, it is not going to happen. They are all together. They are all on one accord. They are all for one another. They all stand together. They all serve a purpose. And guys, that's what you have to realize. These are the examples and things that we must follow. As a believer in the Lord, I would tell you, nobody can hurt my brothers. Well, they can, right? But as a believer of God, I know that I can't hate the person. I know that I'm not supposed to have unfor any type of unforgiveness against them. And if I felt it's there, I need to go to the Lord and speak to the Lord and ask the Lord to help me. To release this individual. Right? So I know I can't hate them. Because God woke them up. Obviously they're still alive. Right? So God woke that person up. But with that being said. There are boundaries and certain things that this person. Even if we've had it before. We cannot have that. This is my brother. Whether or not we are in agreement or not. This is my blood. There is something, a line that person can never cross with me. And there's a certain discussions they can never have with me. And there's certain discussions I'll never have with them. Because this is my brother. These are my brothers. All right? So, as I said before, not that I'm aiding and abetting in wrongdoing. But this person has done something wrong to my flesh and blood. As a sister, there's a certain level of responsibility. A higher level of of uh, uh, uh of accountability and um protection that i have to keep intact at all times for my brother so no you can't come talk to me about my brother no you can't have him in one setting upset and think you can come laugh with me in this setting that's not going to happen because i am a sister and i have a role to play whether or not we are all bubbling and laughing together or not it does not change my role so this individual will know they can't call up me to say anything about him or to try to plot into plan or to laugh or to giggle or I'm going to listen to your side and talk down about my brother. That's not going to happen. And that does not make me any less of a Christian. I have nothing against you, but I am a sister to my brothers. You can't come to me. You can't talk to me about my mother. You can't come talk to me about my father. No, you cannot. Don't even think about it. Why? And I'm not interested in being on the phone with a person who's against my parents. Guys, no matter what you may feel or what you think, the reason why your loyalty must be to your son, your daughter, then to their boyfriend, ex-husband, girlfriend, ex-wife, and all these different things is because they are you. You are one, whether you are close or not. And you send a message because nine times out of ten, while you're there laughing and yucking it up with this individual, their their family's not opening the door like that for your daughter or for your son or for their fam or for their parents or for your family members. So, my brothers and sisters, it is a godlike quality. To still maintain loyalty and respect and to set boundaries. 
Stop embracing the enemies and people who have wounded and hurt your children and hurt your family. There is something seriously going on within any parent, any sibling, any anybody, even a friend that does that. I'm sure that happened with friends. Something happens and they're just all oh, laughing it up with your friend. With, with a person that hurt you, that took from you. They know the whole story and they're always able to tell you what the other person said. But this is not what this video is about. Guys, I'm going to shut down this video uh, for the sake of time. But guys, it's time for forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness if you find it in yourself to do that. If those of you, you don't get forgiveness, this will give you closure. But in all things, we are supposed to be following after the model of of Jesus Christ in all things of the Godhead and how we deal with people, including our family. Your loyalty should not be to the people who have hurt and destroyed your family members, destroyed your sons and daughters, but you should walk in God's absolute and unfailing love. All right, guys.